Okay, it's a couple days later. Um, my HCG on Monday did go down. Sorry, that's my <laughs> windshield wipers. We're having a really rainy day. My HCG did go down to 6,800 on Monday as compared to Friday where it was 8,700, I believe. Definitely, definitely having a period. And I also passed what I'm pretty sure is called a decidual cast. Google at your own risk. It's horrifying. I've only ever heard about it. Um, but I passed a lot of tissue on Monday night and scared me a little bit. I'm bleeding heavy. I just bled all over their table. I could feel it running down my butt. And so they had to get another chuck and they were like, ah. They lifted the little sheet I had over me um, because they had a PA doing it and I think she might be she might be a little bit newer so the nurse practitioner was showing her exactly what to do and the PA lifted the sheet when I said I feel blood <laughs> I think so the NP could see um, <laughs> but I was like no I'm not in pain other than like pretty severe period cramps not severe but like pretty intense and a heavier bleed and they did confirm that my uterine lining is a lot thinner than it was on Monday so I definitely lost that they did still find the ectopic pregnancy um, they think they saw the heartbeat still but again very slow and irregular this has been a lot um, when I'm feeling not my best having to get up fairly early in the morning get ready drive half an hour get my vagina looked at closely and my uterus looked at very closely <laughs> and um you know then drive half an hour back so it's been very tiring so i'm gonna go home and i might just crawl back into bed because i want my heating pad i want to lay down i want to drink my coffee and i want to be comfortable so that's the update just bleeding a lot but definitely this is definitely a period I just feel like laughing now. <laughs> uh, in the ER. Actually in pain this time. A lot. And I've been given pain meds, if you can't tell. Um, I was fine. I had my ultrasound this morning. Which you would have seen because I, I had my camera with me. And then came home was sitting watching YouTube, eating some cereal, and I started having gas pains. And so I sat on the toilet, and they didn't go away. Uh, and they got pretty bad, so I wound up calling Zach, who had to leave work. And here we are. Sorry about them. And now that I have drugs in my system, I was like, let's get, let's get the camera out. So, I'm still pretty uncomfortable. Um, and there's a decent amount of bleeding going on, which Zach had a full view of. <laughs> Sorry. Then you've had about nine doctors come in. Yes. Uh, this is... Terrible. I'm just, yeah, I'm so over this. Yeah. That's all I got for you. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. So, ultrasound confirmed there's blood in my belly, and they will be bringing me back to surgery shortly. He's <laughs> getting all my. <laughs> He's getting all the phone numbers so he can update my dad. I'll see you on the other side. It's the next morning. I feel a lot better, but obviously in pain because I have essentially what is a C-section scar, but smaller. 
uh, it's over. I don't want to cry anymore because I've been crying nonstop. Um, hospital props though, I got delivered breakfast and there's a wire on the floor so I can't get the stupid tray closer to me. <laughs> See? Okay. It's getting caught right there. And I can't quite get out of bed and I don't really have anything that'll reach it. I don't want to try eating. <sighs> wild. This is wild. I think this is coffee. I'm so excited. Oh yeah, that's coffee. Got it. What do we get? Oh, pancakes. That actually looks really good. Like the fact that I have an appetite is fantastic. Something looks good. We got some grapes. That looks really good. Okay, I think that is a good sign. Because normally, I mean, last night I was throwing up. I threw up my my leftovers from. Um, the dinner I had made the night before, I actually ate it early in the day, which I'm glad I did, because it kept me going. Oh, this looks really good. I can't believe the last 24 hours. Not even 24. I didn't start hurting until 3. And it was so sudden and scary, and I wasn't really believing myself until I couldn't get up off of the toilet. And I was like, hmm, I think, sorry, I keep forgetting and I, I have an IV up here, but the one that's running is on my wrist. I was like, I think there might be a problem here. Let me, let me call Zach, because if I faint on this toilet and he finds me dead on the toilet tonight, well, that is just not good. That's embarrassing. That's not a way to go out. Um, so I called him and I couldn't speak well on the phone and I was kind of anxious and hyperventilating a little bit there. And uh, he came home, he raced, only breaking a couple traffic laws, which I'm thankful because I was bleeding internally. So I was not crazy. I hope you guys can hear me because I I don't want to talk loud. It's only, it's not even seven yet. I think the new nurse will probably come in soon. This looks really good. Um, it's probably going to get my ostomy going. And I haven't updated anybody online. I've only updated. The only person who knew before my surgery was my dad and Zach, of course. Um, and then he was call in a couple of our friends because he just you know, needed some support because it was very sudden and scary. Um, I haven't updated anybody else online yet because I mean you could tell the difference of when I updated the last time I was in the ER a week ago. I felt okay then. I didn't feel okay. It's like I just wasn't I just couldn't you know get on my phone or anything. Good, I don't care that it's corn syrup. That's good. I did throw up last night, like I said, so they actually gave me IV Phenergan. They're doing ibuprofen and Tylenol scheduled, and then Oxy is needed, which I did need around 3 a.m an hour before that a doctor came in to look at my belly I don't know who he was but it woke me up and then I couldn't get back to sleep I was really not feeling good so they they gave me the oxy round three and that let me fall asleep by four and I woke up at six so this is a much better rest tonight doesn't sound like it but I feel more rested okay 
I'm gonna eat this and drink my coffee and I'll give you an update later. Here is my lovely room tour. We've got an IV pole running some fluids, some vomit bags, um, incentive spirometer, which I haven't used yet. Um, breakfast, half eaten, all of this stuff that I brought to the hospital. I got that in Vegas and it has been the most helpful thing. Uh, bathroom, which I just peed in by myself without a Foley, so awesome and a curtain. Yep. Okay, I'm just sitting in a chair. Um, a doctor who saw me last week came in and he was fantastic. And he just, he sat in the corner here and talked to me for like, I don't know, 15 minutes. He was really wonderful. Um, and he just made me feel so much better. He said I lost, uh, or there was about 350 cc's of blood in my belly um, that they had to remove. Sorry, that's the bed doing its thing. It's trying to blow up, but I'm not in it. Any Anyways, um, he said that when they got in there, you know, they did the incision lower, they didn't have to touch my bowel there wasn't any scar tissue in that area and so it was very straightforward which they did it open because they were fearful of you know running into a lot of scar tissue which if the incisions had been higher they probably would have but he said that's really encouraging for your future because it looked good down there and I said do you think it's even safe for me to do this like to pursue getting pregnant and he was like I have worked with a lot of people and, you know, you're going to find people that don't think it's okay and safe, but he has seen a lot worse and he said based on what they saw, he thinks it's okay. This is, this is a decision I have to make with Zach because this was scary. Um, and the route that we go, we have to talk about, but... That made me feel so much better and he gave me suggestions for who I could see in terms of an OBGYN and he talked about their surgical team that they have here that consults on difficult deliveries but he's like you you might be able to just do it vaginally like which was really cool to hear because um, I have feared about that I would love to do it that way obviously but yeah Looks like I am going home today. Uh, I guess the team of doctors is currently doing a procedure now that'll last a couple hours. So he said this afternoon um, and that I would have to remove my dressing myself. He's like, are you okay doing that? And like inspecting it? And I said, yeah. As many of you know, I was in WOCN school for about half a second, but I did do the wound class. 
um, and I love wounds, and I like caring for them, so I've done it to myself on my backside. This is a lot easier to see, um, so I, I can certainly do that, and that was the only thing that they usually say, we like to wait 24 hours before we remove it, you would be discharged before that, um, so you would have to do it yourself and monitor it, and I was like, that's okay, I can do that. Um, it is larger than I think I thought. Uh -huh. I thought it was maybe like that. I think it's more like that. I think it's probably larger than my midline, but I don't know for sure because it's still got the bandage on it. So, <sighs> And they're sending me home with um, Oxy. So they want me doing Tylenol and Ibuprofen, you know, as much as I need. And then if it gets a little rough, the Oxy, which is how I've been using it here. Um, I'm not getting it as frequently as I can, but um, I am still trying to take it because this is a weird incision for me. It's really, it's low, it's low. And I'm used to higher up ones where the movement of my legs doesn't quite impact um, as much as this lower incision is impacted by me moving my legs, so. I don't know how women who have had C-sections do this and have a newborn child. I really don't, and if you are one of those people, you are amazing. You are amazing. You could probably tell I keep crying. Um, I'm okay, I'm just sad, I'm just sad, and it's just rough. But um, I just I just shared online what's been going on, and I read the comments, and I oh, I am grateful. I am not grateful for this loud bed. I am grateful for every single person on here. I really am. Okay, I got my my IVs removed. I had two. One is bleeding quite a bit there. Uh, I guess it was in a good spot. Um, I'm just waiting for Zach to get here and then we can go home. We're gonna stop at the pharmacy first and get um, prescriptions. And they just gave me Oxy so that way it can kind of settle in before we leave and then I can be a little bit more comfortable because it's kind of hurting. Ugh, this has been a trip, guys. I don't think I mentioned um, I had blood work done yesterday morning just coincidentally for the methotrexate levels, like just to make sure that my liver and kidney look good, but in that they did, sorry I thought someone was coming in, in that they did hemoglobin and it was 12.1. I think it was like 13 last week. This morning it was 9. <laughs> so. Um, not only was it the 350 milliliters in me, but also what was coming out vaginally, because they said the tube was probably backing up, and that's why I was having so much blood. It slowed down a ton. I actually just had a little bit of blood, but it was like, it looked like it had been sitting in my little vaginal pocket for a while and kind of clotted together, so, and it wasn't, it wasn't a ton. It was like that much. So, um, this has been crazy. I can't wait to be home. I sit in my chair or in the bed. I don't know. I want to give myself a sponge bath too because I am gross. I, I have my little wipes that I bought like five years ago, four years ago for my proctive colectomy. I keep them in the car and I barely use them so I still had them. <laughs> I tried to use them today. They worked for like an hour and then I don't know what it is about hospitals. I just get gross. Um, you know what? I want to take this guy too. I think that's probably a good idea. Uh, just waiting for Zach. You ready to go? <laughs> Are you ready to go? Guys, this reminds me of um, the proctocolectomy clip I have of oh, the suitcase yeah. and then you. Okay, let's go home. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you are looking for a way to help support my channel, consider liking this video or even subscribing. You can also check out my store at letstalkivd.shop. 
I have stickers and hoodies like these guys over here just related to chronic illness and inflammatory bowel disease, something fun. And I also have a coupon code for my YouTube watchers. You could also become a member of my channel like the wonderful people scrolling on screen here. They've become a member and they have access to videos a little bit earlier. It's a great way to support my channel and really just watching my videos means the world. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next.